Hello, I'm Louise Nola. Um, I set up Distinctive Wash Limited and we manufacture distinctive washing powder for men. The idea came about when I was working for a laundry brand um, back in 2009, 2010. Um, and basically I'd been contracted to them to help them rebrand their product um, for the eczema care market. Um, during that time, I spent hours and hours of my own time researching laundry. I looked at all the niche markets that were coming into place in laundry in the next few years, lots to do with different fragrances, even antifungals in laundry, all kinds of things. But there wasn't anything anywhere um, meeting the niche market of, of masculine products in laundry. And yet I found tons and tons of blogs on the internet basically with men asking for there to be a masculine product. They didn't want to go into Tesco's to buy fairy with little babies on it. They didn't want to buy a, um, a brand of softener that had trailing flowers or pink packaging. They wanted something masculine that smelt manly. So that's where we came up with the idea. We dabbled with um, some digital advertising and some classified advertising in the nationals. Didn't get an awful lot back, to be honest. Um, then I started really getting to grips with the social media. Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Pinterest. And I would have said that the majority of our business thereon actually came from conversation stimulated on those channels. Twitter in particular was a really, really good way of reaching out to some of the peers that I wanted to be in touch with in the industry. Um, I knew from an early start that I wanted a little bit of help and support from the likes of people like King of Shaves, Will King. Um, so I sent him a tweet, asked him if he'd like to try some product, um, which was met favourably. He then tried the product, loved it, sent me an invite to go to Home House in London to meet him. Um, where I actually met him and Duncan Bannatyne and had a little bit of a chat. Um, so that was great exposure at an early stage. Um, it gave us then further press to talk about. Um, the, the press and publicity side of it, in the early days we used a company called Vocus, which were not targeted PR by any means um, and not necessarily the way I would have gone if I'd had a big budget behind me, but it was a fantastic way of getting those early reports about Distinctive and our little successes in front of a bigger audience. Most of our best pub bits of publicity have actually come about quite unexpectedly, um, and it's been quite important to be able to respond quickly to any opportunities as a new startup. We haven't had much money behind us, um, so, for example, um, on the social media, after a series of tweets that I'd set up, I'm using um, a bit of software called Sprout Social to, to preset some of our brand message tweets, but I'm also tweeting myself as often as I can, just little bits and responding to people. But as part of um, one of the series of tweets that we sent out, we had a tweet back in return from Steve King, who's Channel 4's male beauty blogger. Um, he picked up on the product, was really, really fascinated, just sent a cheeky tweet, hey, what's all this about then? Can you send me some? I'd like to try it. Uh, we sent him the first tub, um, which he very, very quickly then started tweeting about as like mad. He loved it. He started doing the laundry for his whole family with it to the extent that when he ran out, his little lad um, had actually said to him, Daddy, where's our nice smelling laundry going? you know, he wanted the, the nice smelling laundry powder back. Um, so that was fabulous. I think his audience was sort of something like 102,000 at the time. I'm not actually sure what it is now, but it, his tweets were basically reaching an awful lot of people and an awful lot of interest was then coming back to us as a result of it. <laughs> um, so it's being very clever with your budget as a startup, um, picking 
the little things that actually have got a lot of mileage rather than necessarily blasting out the AdWords campaigns, the um, digital banner headings, we, which we did try in the early days and we tried retargeting campaigns so that um, advertising was following the people that had hit on our website, it was following them around for a period of time, um, but to be all, in all honesty, it wasn't really that successful. Not um, in comparison to the bits of publicity from public relations activity, from writing stories, from even writing stories about the differences between a bio and a non-biological washing powder. Um, so really, depending on what your product is, picking out those, those little things that's going to be interesting content online and be shared by people. Um, similar success when we we haven't run any competitions ourselves directly, but one of our small online retailers ran a little competition where um, they had to retweet the competition, they had to follow both ourselves and they had to follow them. Um, and that, that was absolutely outstanding. We only gave away eight of our little single wash sachets for that exercise. And I think I increased my Twitter followers by about 150 in about... 36 hours which you know was fab fabulous and over time we'll be looking at the analytics of the um, the back end of the website to see whether those new Twitter followers have actually converted but I'm pleased to say the Twitter followers have stayed so they haven't just liked us and then gone away at the end of the competition um, but having a whole mixture of activities I think is the the trick to sort of getting going rather than concentrating on any one specific activity and it's all about measuring and checking and testing what's working and then you do more of it or you come up with more interesting content and different angles um, you know we'll certainly run competitions again in the future but we won't run them all the time um, and a little bit like our best pricing strategy, we won't ever be seen to be promoting a sale online for Distinctive because price as premium is actually quite important to us. But we will make sure that all of our customers and the people that are subscribed to the website are getting regular prompts with regular offers. Um, email campaigns still pull. Um, they, they definitely pull probably with our buyers list at about 40%, which, you know, from that perspective, means that I know if I've gained a customer and they've bought once, they've bought twice, they've bought three, four times, they've become an advocate at that point. And many of them will send me personal messages, direct messages, they'll suggest other avenues for the business, they'll suggest retailers, and they really, they almost become my extended selling force, although they're paying me to do so. Um, and that's the kind of business that I want to grow.